Akwaba Ikabo. Welcome to the Temple of Enyame's virtual Sunday service. The philosophy and teachings of the Temple of Enyame are that the great I am that I am, Onyankumpum, the solar logos, judges us by what is in our hearts. Consequently, the temple teaches as part of its philosophy that we must always keep our intentions noble, correct, pure, and in the loving best interests of all created life. There are three pillars upon which the foundation of the temple rests and from which lessons are taught. They are spiritual initiation and unfolding, rites of passage, birth, puberty, marriage, and death, and liberation theology, the application of religion to contemporary social issues and problems. Good morning. I am Nana Kwabana Brown. I am the founder and chief elder of the Temple of Minyame of Washington, D.C., and I welcome you to our Sunday morning class presentation. So happy that you're joining us. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to uh, start out with our, uh, our uh, call to worship. And it's Inyame Afashe, God's Festival Day. Inyame Homeda, God's Sabbath Day. Inyame Frewo, God is calling you, God has called you. We should all come and pray to God. And I want you to hold on to it. I want you to learn it. And I want you to take opportunities for you to sing it, even when you're not tuning in to our Sunday morning presentation. Okay. In your may afashe, in your may homeda, in your may frewo. Munyana mumra in ya me afashe in ya me homeda in ya me frewo munyana mumra Almighty God we call your name we do our invocation that we may come closer to you Almighty God May we find you, Almighty God, within ourselves and be our best persons. Blessing to us this we pray. Amen. Okay, I'm um, going to sing a couple of songs from our uh, African-American traditions. <clears throat> and we, sh we should never, ever, ever, ever uh, neglect them or forget about them or be ashamed about them. For it is living proof of the power of African, African spirituality, where it had us to endure slavery and see freedom. Whoa, freedom, whoa, freedom, whoa, freedom over me. And before I'll be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord and be free. Whoa, freedom, whoa, freedom, whoa, freedom over me. And before I'll be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord and be free. We sought freedom for the very first time that we touched foot on this ground. We ran at every opportunity. We rebelled, we resisted, and we give thanks that we have that spirit and that it's in our Negro spirituals that believe that somehow God would come, the ancestors would come, and show us the way to freedom. Okay. I'll sing uh, one more song, and then we're going to do our libation. What a fellowship. What a a peace divine leaning on the everlasting arms. What have I to care? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning on the Avasum. Leaning on the Arisha. Leaning on on the everlasting arms, leaning on our ancestors, leaning, 
Leaning on the everlasting arms, we brought to America the concept of a God that was near and dear, who was the everlasting arms that we could lean on and rely upon, that would lead us towards freedom. And we give thanks that our ancestors came here and brought something that is everlasting, and that is a true spirituality within religious practices within America. Okay. All right, we're going to do it this time. I'm going to do libation. And uh, libation is a form of prayer. It is uh, essentially an African form of prayer. Um, and I say that, and I just want to add, it's an African form of prayer, and it's a form of prayer that is found around the world. I co-officiated a wedding some 25, 30 years ago. And to my surprise, a rabbi in his uh, Judaic traditions poured libation. It's a very, very old and special form of prayer. I'm going to ask one of my assistants to come up and uh, assist me. Okay. Just need a glass. All right, going to pour with water. And uh, today we're going to use a cola nut. And when we uh, when we pour libation on my on my vosa, I hope that you can see it. I'm not quite sure if you can, but the vosa is the board for ifa. In my tradition, we say afa, and we say vosa. And a sheshe traditions they say upon. And uh, we have been given permission by our father to use it. And so, therefore, we use this as our, our, our place to incorporate into our libation. What we're going to do now, we're going to uh, take the kola nut. And when you are praying to God, you can offer an egg or you can offer a cola. So I present this cola to the four cardinal points of the universe. And I want you to do the same. I want you to do the same. One, two, three, and four. I open it up. And I place it with the, with the, uh, the uh, inside part, the white part up. It always means good luck. I place it down here, and then I cover it with shrey. It can be shrey, which is clay. It can be powdered eggshells. But I do that to respectfully remove any energy and vibrations that may have been on it before we began to present it to God. Okay, as I begin now, I raise my glass up, and I say, I'll go, and you all who are out there, reply, Ame, A-M-E-E-E. -E -E. I'll go, I'll go, I'll go. A young upon Kwame Chudampon in Suo, Almighty God, upon whom all men can lead, all human beings can lead, and that fall. We call you, we call you, we call you. A young upon Kwame Chinapon in Suo, Asaseya, Asaseya Fua, Mother Earth. We call our ancestors. We call John Lewis. We call Araminta, Harriet Tubman. We call Fannie Lou Hamer. We call Benguela from Brazil. We call Mama Noni, Mama Nanny from Jamaica. We call all of our ancestors upon your shoulders. Upon you we lean, and we must call you now. We need you to come now, that we may be able to defeat the forces of the dark side, which are rallying. And we call you, our ancestors, to give strength to our president, Biden. He needs your power. He needs your support. And we ask that you encourage him to lean upon that beautiful, brilliant woman, who's his vice president. We see him, but we don't see her. 
And she's there for a reason and a purpose. She has strength. She has energy. She has unbelievable mental cap capabilities and capacities. And he, if he just allows her, she, the black woman of liberation, shall support him. So we call you mighty God and we pray that you shall encourage uh, President Biden to utilize the black woman within his sphere, within his environment, with his administration, his vice president, that she can lend him some of the powerful strength that she has. <clears throat> we call you mighty God, we call our mothers, we call our fathers. We call you, we call you, we call our gods. <clears throat> we call the gods of the crossroads. We call, uh, we call <clears throat> Ishio Legma. We call Aisha Legba. <clears throat> we call the Emwetis. We call Elenini, the God of the roads. We call you and we invite you to bring your powers down. We, the children of African descent, we honor and we acknowledge you, the forces that God has given us to fight evil. And we pray to you that we may be active in utilizing you to bring about justice on the planet Earth. <clears throat> so we call you Asia Legba. We call you the Nwetia. We call you Adade Kofi. We call you Ogun. We call you Shango. We call you Asurjibi. We call you, we call you, we call you. Not for play. Not for amusement not for entertainment, but to fight for us and help us that we maintain the fight. So we call you, Almighty God, we call you our ancestors, we call our mothers, our fathers, our grandparents, we call you the deities, and we utilize you to bring about justice upon the planet Earth. This we pray. We say, Enti and so, Jinayachi, we stand behind our backs, no Yedawasi, and we thank you. Amen. Okay. All right. So I want you to really feel the, the, the depth and the emotion that I have given uh, with my prayer and to know that libation is not a ceremony. Libation is a form of prayer. And we invoke all the powers of the universe to work through us to bring about peace, justice upon the planet. This we pray. And we offer our prayer to, uh, to, uh, to Mother Earth. Mother Earth, we ask that we may, before it's too late, before the fires consume us and the floods drown us, may we use good sense as a species and may those of us who see what's happening to you, may we be vocal and active and move about your preservation. This we pray, Mother Earth. Amen. All right. I'm going to sing a few songs here. Uh, the first song I'm going to sing is to Alegba. Alegba is the force in the universe about chance and change and uh, about uh, thoughts and processes, about moving past doubt, about being challenged and being initiated. Eshu Legba. We know within the Akom traditions, we know that the Eshus are the Mwetias. Okay, here we go. Eshu Legba. Eshu Legba. Legba Amofai Baya Legba Go. Ago, 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 Ago. I go ile, I go lona, I go, I go. Eshro a leg by. Eshro a leg by. A leg by, I'm off on me by your leg by go. I go, I go. I go, I go. I go ile, I go lona, I go, I go. I go, I go. 
Ago, 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 ile, ago, lona, ago, ago. So this force that we call a legba, it has many names and manifestations around the world. It manifests themselves as the dwarfs, as the leprechauns, as the hecara, and in the uh, comb traditions, as the, as the Mwetia. And they are at every threshold of initiation and change. You carried your bride, many of you, across the threshold. You have to cross the threshold to come into your home. You have to step over a threshold to be initiated into your higher levels of development. And it's the Elegbas and Nimwetis who are there to test you and to tempt you and to put fear in your heart to see if you shall come past fear and cross over. Okay. This is to the Mwetia. Oh, yeah, Mwetia, Mwetia, Mabo. Yeah, Mwetia. Mwetia, Mabo. Yeah, Mwetia. Oh, yeah, Mwetia, Mwetia, Mabo. Yeah, Mwetia, 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 Mabo. Yeah, Mwetia. Oh, yeah, Mwetia, Mwetia, Mabo. Yeah, Mwetia. And Quetin, Quetin, Mabo. Yeah, Mwetia. I knew my Ben, I'm sure Ben, yeah, we. I knew my Ben, I'm sure when we, most of my Bremu. I knew my Ben, I'm sure Ben, yeah, we. Most of my Bremu. I knew my Ben, I'm sure Ben, yeah, we. Now, when you have lost that one sock, and you know you put two socks in the dryer, that's the Mwetia, that's the leg bars. When you can't find your keys and you know you put them where they're supposed to be, that's the leg bars, that's the Mwetias. And they're just trying to get your intention because everything that you lose, and sometimes they have taken it into the spiritual world, they will help you to find it and bring it back. And the beauty of these forces is that uh, when we give to them or when they take something and we get something back, we always get more than we lost. That's the Mwetias, that's the leg bars. So I ask you to know about them, learn about them. Um, by all means, embrace all that has been given to you as our African religion and spirituality. This we pray, amen. Okay, I'm going to sing another song. Uh, <clears throat> this song is for Nana AC. S Asam Radri, Asam Radri, my woman had made a hemi me dance on me. Ace it back, my woman had a hemi me dance on me. Asam Radri, Asam Radri, my woman had a hemi me dance on me. Nana AC is saying, don't overindulge, keep a balance within life. She is telling you about the beetle who fell into the, the, the bottle of alcoholic beverage and drowned. And Nana AC is saying that the same will happen to us if we allow ourselves to become involved with overdoing things, over drinking, over drugging, over sexing. All those things are there to be experienced, but not to the point where we overindulge and kill ourselves. That's a message from Nana AC. A Sam Raja, me who made the hemi me dance on ye. Ace it back, me who made the hemi me dance on ye. A Sam Raja, a Sam Raja, me who made the hemi me dance on ye. Hold on to that, brothers and sisters. That message and that lesson from the Abbasum. She's not really an Abbasum, but she's a wonderful spirit. And so, therefore, we ask that, uh, that uh, by all means, by all means, that you pay attention to what the gods have to say to us. Have a balanced life. This we pray. Amen. Okay. Okay, can you go check? Hmm? 
All right, so um, at this time, I'm going to have this Cookie Brown do our prayer to the ancestors. And uh, we uh, will follow that uh, with uh, a song by uh, our young brother, Yao Barrero. And then we'll sing one of our own songs. We always stay content connected. We always stay connected to our African ancestry, our African uh, presence within the Americas. And we're going to sing a song from our traditions. Okay, we bring on Miss Cookie Brown. I am Ida Cookie Brown. Please join me in the prayer to the divine ancestors. Divine ancestors who oversee the evolvement of our race. We acknowledge and salute you as highly evolved ancestors and masters who once walked the earth. We pray that you will make contact with us through our deities and holy people and thereby lead us to the way that God wishes us to follow. Amen. Okay, thank you, Ms. Cookie Brown. All right, I'm going to, uh, um, I'll, I'll, I'm going to, going to have Brother Young, Brother Yarbrough come on and uh, sing, uh, lift every voice and sing, and I'll follow that with one of the, another one of the songs from our, our African-American traditions. Greetings, everyone. My name is Jabari Yarbrough, and will you please join me in singing Lift Every Voice and Sing? Lift every voice and sing Till earth and heaven ring Ring with the harmonies Of liberty Let our rejoicing Rise high as the listening skies Let it resound loud as the rolling sea Sing the song Full of the faith that the dark past has taught us Sing a song Full of the hope that the present has brought us Facing the rising sun of our new day begun Let us march on till victory is won Thank you. Thank you, young brother Yabro. You're such a fantastic young man you are. Thank you so much for that. All right, we're going to bring another song. This is from uh, our African-American ancestry. Uh, our ancestors realized the importance of, of uh, their parents praying for them, unquestionably. And that's where we have this song, My Mother Prayed For Me. You know, and that's so very, very important, so important. Those are the prayers that really have pushed us forward. We're going to sing that. We're going to change it just a little bit. <clears throat> My ancestors prayed for me. They had me on their mind. They took the time to pray for me. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed for me. My grandma prayed for me. She had me on her mind. She took the time to pray for me. I'm so glad she prayed. I'm so glad she prayed. I'm so glad she prayed for me. My father prayed for me. He had me on his mind. He took the time to pray for me. I'm so glad he prayed. I'm so glad he prayed. I'm so glad he prayed for me. We give honor to you, our ancestors. It is your prayers. It is your sweat. It is your energy, your determination that has put us where we are today. Bless us and guide us this, we pray. Amen. All right. At this time, I'm going to have you all join us. We're going to do our, uh, our, our universal prayer. 
And I ask you to uh, say it along with us. Um, as I've told you before, it's, it's, my, it's my, my road mark and my road map as to where I am. There's some days that I'm, I'm better with it, I'm closer to it. There's some days that I slip, but I never let myself slip but so far. And I go back and I try to remember the things I'm supposed to be doing. Okay, please repeat after me. Mother, Father, God, who exists on the Lagoic Plain, from whom and from which emanate the Word, the sound creator of the universe, holy are all the names by which your many children call you. Thy kingdom is the whole universe, and thy spirit is contained in everything. We ask that consciousness of you, your spirit, and your kingdom shall be given unto us. We ask that we shall be instruments of your good here on earth. Bless us today with prosperity, health, and peace of mind. Increase our capacity towards good and our ability to give. Help us be in harmony with the laws of forgiveness, karma, and reincarnation. Teach us to forgive ourselves and we may learn to forgive others. Help us to maintain our consciousness of godliness. Help us to turn our minds against negativities. You are the creator of human, women and men, and the source of all life in the universe. We are your children, creating your spiritual image and likeness, and we affirm oneness with you. Om Asomdwe, Amen. Almighty God, bless the recitation of your holy words. May they go deep within us. May they guide us on a second by second, minute by minute, hour by hour, daily basis, almighty God, this we pray. Amen. All right. So what we're going to do now at this time, at this time, at this time, we're going to uh, do our prayer to Arumala. And uh, I've uh, uh, mentioned to you who Arumala is. Uh, Arumala and Afa are pretty much synonymous, pretty much synonymous. Uh, the names are used from us. Much as, as uh, uh, many Christians use Jesus and God as synonymous terms. Well, we use Arumala and Ifa as synonymous terms. The same. He is the person that God gave the, uh, the, uh, the system, the practice of Ifa or Afa divination to. And it is spread all over the world. And it's here, of course, by the way, of the involuntary passage of Africans to the Americas. We have Afa here, most assuredly. All right. Uh, so I want you to um, I want you to, to uh, follow the prayer with me. Um, and it goes as follows. O Rumala, witness of fate, second to Olodomare God, thou art far more efficacious than medicine. Thou the immense orbit that averts the day of death. To thee, salutation is first due in the morning. Thou equilibrium that adjusts world forces. Thou art the one whose exertion it is to reconstruct the creature of bad luck, repair of ill luck. He who knows it becomes immortal. Lord, the undeposable king, perfect in the house of wisdom. My Lord, infinite in knowledge, for not known thee in full, we are futile. Oh, we could know thee in full. All would be well with us. Ashe, amen, kose, kose, kose. Blessings, blessings, blessings. We ask, Afa, uh, that you uh, guide us. We ask that all those who, uh, who, who have heard the word of Afa, Ifa, to seek out a uh, Bukor, seek out a Babalaw, seek out Ian Ifa. And uh, allow them to guide you into seeing your place within the universe, to seeing how it is that you can best utilize things within your life. And we pray that you're able to do that. Okay. Okay, um, at this time, we're going to take our medicine. You know, our medicine is meditation. That's our medicine. Our medicine is meditation. And uh, we have, from the last couple of Sundays, uh, we have shortened it up. Um, last Sunday we did Yepe Dawo, which means I love you. We have to, we say this because it's so very important to realize that it's, it is the emotion and there's so many different kinds of love. 
And the one that we 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 are are emphasizing is that love which universally covers the best part of ourselves and the best concerns for other human beings. That's the love we talk about. And of course, um, uh, f the friendship love is important, romantic love is important, but the love of a person knowing that they are a child of, of the one true living God like you and I is so important. Okay, I want you to inhale, stomach out, and exhale. Ye pay the woe. Ye pay the woe. Ye pay the woe. We love you. We love you. Ye pay the woe. Okay. Inhale again, stomach out. Exhale, stomach in. Relax one more time. Inhale, stomach out. Relax. Yay, pay da wo. Inhale and begin. Yay, pay da wo. We're going to do it seven times. That was number two we just did. Inhale deeply. Yay, pay da wo. Number four coming up. Yay, pay da wo. Inhale deeply and hold it. This is number five. Yay, pay da wo. Send that energy out into the universe. Inhale deeply. Yay, pay da wo. Last time, number seven. Inhale deeply. Hold it and begin. Yay, pay da wo. Almighty God, help us to find this good place within ourselves where we feel love, where we know that there are two choices in life, love and fear. And may we, Almighty God, always decide to move towards love, which we will know as we feel that good place inside of ourselves and that good place as we see and interact with one another. Almighty God, bless us this we pray. Amen. All right, just want to let you relax and um, gave you a little bit of the Akan language. I want you to hold on to it. Everybody has that good place inside of them. You know, seek it out. The beauty of that good place is that it calms the mind. It gives you clarity and helps you to make the best and better decisions. That's what it does for me, and I know it can do it for you. All right, so uh, what we're going to do now is do our offering. And um, <clears throat> I want you to uh, uh, have a virtual basket. You know, you can, you can hold one in your hand. If you don't have it, you can imagine you have it in your hand. And I want you to take your, your money. I want you to put it in your hand like so. And the prayer is divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I give and all that I receive. When you put money in the bank, when you take money out the bank, when you buy groceries in the store, always bless your money. It is a symbol of prosperity. It is a conduit for prosperity. However, prosperity itself is a state of mind. It's a way that we think. And so we ask that you shall accept that uh, abundance is yours by right as a child of God. Okay, here we go. I want you to inhale and exhale and inhale and exhale. Allow yourself to calm down and inhale and exhale. All right. Repeat after me. 
divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I give and all that I receive. Okay? You can put in your virtual basket. It's dollar sign, ASUO, A-S-U-O, Legba, L-E-G-B-A. Put it into your virtual basket. Now I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to chant of uh, the affirmation. And as I'm doing that, I want you to touch the money to your third eye, to your heart, your third eye, your heart, your third eye, your heart. Put it in your virtual basket. And dollar sign ASUO, A S U O, leg by L E G V A. And what you can also do for, uh, if you do PayPal, um, in Yama Healing Services.com, make sure you tag it for the Temple of India May. And very, very soon we'll have uh, one. This is just for the Temple of India May. Okay, here we go. I want you to relax. And uh, as I'm chanting, I want you to do what I said. Go around your head three times when you finish, but don't rush. Okay. <clears throat> Divine love to me blesses and multiplies all that I give and all that I receive. Mm -hmm. Divine love to me blesses and multiplies all that I give and all that I receive. Mm -hmm. Divine love to me blesses and multiplies all that I give and all that I receive. Mm. Divine love to me blesses and multiplies all that I give and all that I receive. Mm. Divine love to me blesses and multiplies all that I give and all that I receive. Mm. Almighty God, bless the gifts and bless the givers and return it unto us tenfold, twentyfold, a hundredfold. This we pray. Amen. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Um, <clears throat> uh, this this topic that we're on is, is liberation theology. And liberation theology is the uses of religion and spirituality for social change. It's a term that was coined in the 60s and 70s with the uh, liberation movements within South America, um, uh, forced by um, Catholic priests and nuns who were killed. They were killed in their quest to bring about justice in Costa Rica, Guatemala, Honduras, those various places down there. Chile. And so I want you to understand that your people, our people, have always used religion as a source and form of liberation and as a means of liberation. And so what we're discussing now is women of African descent who have moved for liberation, who have used the religion for liberation. And, you know, last week um, we mentioned and we talked about um, uh, our own first one that we have here, who is Harriet Tubman. And, uh, you know, she was just such a totally unbelievable person and uh, really, really um, did so much. She was a, a God-fearing woman. She was able to commune with spirit and be guided by God. And by all means, we give thanks for her. And it's sort of interesting because her real name is Araminta. And she, she is our our heroine here in North America. So I want to, this, 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 uh, to, this uh, today, I want us to talk a little bit about the uh, women of South America, of Brazil, specifically Brazil, South America. And I want you to know that uh, South America uh, began um, slavery um, a whole century before slavery was initiated here in, in North America. And it lasted a whole 20 years longer. In the 1880s, there was still slavery in Brazil. And as a result of that, as a result of that, there were many, many uh, 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 insurrections, many, many resistances 
to religion, uh, through, uh, through uh, uh, resistances to slavery. And I want you to understand the nature of Brazil. Brazil has the largest black population outside of Nigeria, West Africa. The largest concentration of black people outside of Nigeria, West Africa is in Brazil. The majority of them come from uh, uh, Nigeria. The majority of them come from uh, Angola. And these, uh, these, uh, these influences and these uh, energies are very, very present today. So as a result of that, as a result of that, uh, and the practice of, of, uh, of these religions, Angolan religion, and Yoruba religion. Yoruba religion is actually called Asheshe, are uh, very present today in Brazil. There are scholars who travel from Nigeria to Brazil today to see and relearn and learn rituals and ceremonies which are no longer practiced in Nigeria, but are practiced in Brazil. Now, we'll say also that one of the things that was sort of different about slavery in Brazil is that the Africans in Brazil, many of them traveled back and forth to Nigeria during the slavery period, particularly, the, particularly uh, the, the, those who had uh, obtained their freedom. And many of them uh, would go back to Nigeria and study different things within the Orisha and bring those practices back to Brazil, a piece of history that I really want you to know about. Now, the, the, the person that I, um, that I came to talk about today, but I'm going to talk about some other peoples, is a Teresa de Benguela. And I want to thank uh, our, our head technician, um, Brother Yao, for having brought it to my attention. And she is a remarkable woman, an unbelievably beautiful woman. If the presentations, the pictures that we've seen her are real, she was an unbelievably gorgeous woman black in complexion, beautiful in form, and a fierce warrior for her people. She, uh, um, she along with her husband, uh, formed the Quilombo Coate. Quilombo is the term for maroon society in Brazil. And there were many, many Quilombo. The most famous one was the Quilombo Palmares. And we'll talk about that a little bit before we finish today. But the amazing thing about Benguela was that she was a, uh, a freedom fighter for her people. That she formed a quilombo, a maroon colony, where her people could, <clears throat> could, could leave the plantations, escape from the plantations, and come to and have their own free society. And of course, within her own free society, they were able to practice their culture. <clears throat> just give me just one second. Freedom is practicing your culture. Racism is the imposition of culture A upon culture B. Slavery was the highest representation of that, where we were being forced into practicing a different culture. But our resistance came from our Arisha and our African gods and our African spirits. And they were the ones that reigned in the Quilombos. Now she, uh, Banguela, <coughs> and uh, Banguela and her husband, their uh, Quilombo was very close to what is now <coughs> the Brazilian-Bolivian border, just so you can understand. What is now, called, what is now Bolivia... The border between Bolivia and <clears throat> Brazil is where the Quilombo was. And she was remarkable. She was absolutely remarkable. And she was a fighter. They used to have to fight quite often to defend the forces that would invade the Quilombos in an attempt to re-slave, re-enslave the Africans who were there, who practiced their culture, who practiced their religion, who practiced their spirituality and knew that freedom means practicing your own culture. 
That's what freedom means. Enslaving racism means the imposition and the diminution of your culture, your religion, your spirituality. And in Brazil today, if you have the opportunity to go there, in the parks are huge statues of the Orisha. The streets are named and the areas are named after the Orisha today in Brazil where they sell cars and cars and metal parts and metal and iron and steel is, is the area of Ogun and that's the name of it. So I want you to understand what is in Brazil today and how important it is. Uh, Banguela is important and she is martyred today honored as a martyr today because she was eventually captured. Eventually, the combined forces of Spain and Portugal, yes, I said Spain and Portugal, overcame, overran her quilombo. And rather than go back into slavery, she committed suicide. She took her own life. She refused to go back to a life of slavery. And as a result of that, every J July 25th in Brazil, they have a special day honoring her. As we, the Africans in North America, must honor her also. So I just want you to know about this woman. And I'm going to just now mention some other women in Brazil, beside Banguela, that I want you to know about. And I want you to have a clear understanding of the back and forth movement of uh, the Africans in Brazil um, to, to, to travel back to Nigeria. And they did it. They did it. The uh, a name that's in, uh, that's in uh, Nigeria today is Da Silva. Da Silva um, uh, in Nigeria today are the, is a name that was taken from Brazil back to Nigeria. As such, many of the Brazilian Africans who had uh, uh, acquired Portuguese names went back to Nigeria. There's a whole colony in present-day Nigeria, which is, uh, are the descendants of those who left Brazil and repatriated. And you know them by their names, such as the Portuguese names that they have. So uh, this woman, uh, Banguela, as I said, is, is uh, uh, acknowledged. She is like our Araminta, which is the real name for Harry Tubman, in her determination to provide a place and a means for our people to be free. All right, so that's every July 25th. Had I remembered this year, I would have done a special something for her. And next year this time, I, I shall by all means that I shall do that. Um... Some other people that we want to mention in Brazil, and now you know why we talk about Brazil, because it's the largest black population outside of Nigeria, West Africa. Can you believe that President Bush did not know that? <laughs> you know, he, he, he didn't know that. He was surprised. Well, what can I say? All right, so some other people that I want you to be aware of as I, uh, as I move on is not only Banguela, but there's a woman named Ia Nasora. Ia Nasora. Ia means mother. That's what it means. And uh, she uh, was a freed African who in the 1830s was one of the co-founders co of the Condomble movement. And again, the Condomble movement is an African movement the Kondomle, they have all of the Orishas. From Malegba to Ogun to Yemoja to Oya. And in that also in Kondomle, they also have the, uh, the Angolan gods. And it's only appropriate to have the Native American spirits to it, which uh, also. And in the 1830s, Ianacera was the co-founder of Kondomle. 
It is a powerful, beautiful thing. If you go to Brazil, by all means, uh, find your time to go visit and see their ceremonies. Uh, one of the people that was a co-founder with her, and remember, all these religious movements were, were uh, resistance movements. Slavery, imperialism, and racism are means of displacing your, 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 your culture, your worldview, and your spirituality, and pushing into something else. So the condomble remains today a system of resistance and liberation, and they're being heavily persecuted by the Christians who desecrate their temples. And by all means, they continue to persist given those who are there a sense of culture, a sense of culture, a sense of who they are, a sense of freedom, a sense of being African. And interesting enough, uh, two of the people who assisted her were Ia Adeta, Ia Akala. And they, when these women were able to trace themselves back to towns and cities in Nigeria. The towns of K2, and Oyo. Remember, as I told you before, that many of the Brazilians travel back and forth between Brazil and Africa. And these women, as they went back and forth to Africa, they receive and they sort out further information on the Orisha, to which they brought back to strengthen the practices within their condomblés, to continue the practice of their religion and spirituality. And they continue today to do it in a very powerful and wonderful way. And practicing your religion and your culture is freedom. It is absolutely freedom. So I'm going to just wind down a little bit and it says we talk about these women, fantastic, beautiful women. We have to realize that we have an obligation of those of us who practice African religion to use our religion in the same way for freedom and liberation putting the gods to work for our freedom, calling upon our ancestors for our freedom and doing what we need to do to organize, to unify, etc. I did the reading of the year for Afa. Afa said, by all means, things would improve for us. And I want you to be very clear. That means because you're going to get up and do something. Very, very important. You must be as active as Banguela, as Nasera, as Data, as Akala, these powerful women. You must be as active as they to fight the powers of oppression, the powers of the dark side. Okay. So I leave you with that. I leave you with that. And we want to really, um, we really want to, uh, to, uh, um, to acknowledge these women. And well, I want to just finish up by adding this one more, Dantera. Dantera was, uh, was the wife of Zumbi. We hear about Zumbi and the, uh, uh, the, the Quilombo of Palmaris, which lasted for that's a, almost 100 years, very, very long, before it was overrun. But I want you to understand that one of the powers behind this, we know about... Uh, <clears throat> Zumbi, great Shango priest, etc., etc., etc. But we don't know about Dantera. And Dantera was known for her martial arts abilities that when it came time to fight the, the Portuguese, she was right there. They say she was a profound corporis, which is a person that knows corporea, a co profound warrior. And she fought side by side with her husband, husband Zumbi. So I leave you with these women from Brazil, and I want you to know about them. And I want you not just to rely on the Afa saying that things will get better, but to utilize your religion to fight for freedom and liberation. This we pray. Amen. All right. All right, so uh, what I want to do at this time um, 
But there's another one, but I'll save it for next week because I learned about it when I was in Brazil. When I was in Brazil, I learned about her. Some of the women were so powerful, they had to keep them chained up. But we'll talk about that one next week. We'll talk about one of those next week. That's how powerful they were with their ability to, to, to uh, bring about forces and powers through the spoken word. That's next week. We'll talk about that next week. And also next week, we're going to talk about <clears throat> from uh, Jamaica, Mama Nanny. We're going to talk about Mama Nanny. So next week, we'll talk about the one who I just mentioned. And uh, she uh, was so powerful that uh, they did not let her open her mouth. Her name was Anastasia. Anastasia. And uh, we'll talk about her next week. Just to show you the power. Our women still have that power. That power is still in our women. All right, enough of that. Uh, by all means, I want you to tune in next week. All right, what we're going to do at this time, and I want to thank you so very much for being uh, with us uh, on our, uh, our presentation. And I wanted to, to, to stimulate you. I wanted to motivate you. You know, I want you to really, really understand that, uh, that it is our women in various parts of the world that have been the backbone to our freedom and, and freedom and liberation movements. You know, for us, Araminta, Harriet Tubman, powerful woman with a powerful name. All right, so we're gonna do our benediction, and then um, after our benediction, we're gonna do the song by Maladoma Somme, which gives honor to our ancestors. You have to really call upon these people. The sisters from Brazil, the sisters from Antigua, the sisters from Trinidad, the sisters from Brazil, the sisters from Cuba, the sisters from America. You must call upon them and ask them to help us to move forward and make a difference, make a change. All right. Please follow us as we do our benediction. May the power and spirit of God, the ancestors and the deities, bless us and keep us until we meet again. Okay, Porta Samane. Sa means father, Ma means mother. But I'm going to switch it because we're talking about our women. I'm going to start out with Mamane. Okay, here we go. Porta Mamane. Porta Samane. Porta Mamane. Oh. Por a mama me o ah. Por a mama ne, I give praise to my female ancestors, to my mothers. Por a sama ne, to my fathers, my male ancestors. Por a mama ne o. Por a mama ne o ah. All right. All right, so we've done our uh, benediction. We're going to do our doxology. Um, please repeat after me, or if you see it on the screen, say it with me. Praise God that good be everywhere. Praise the collective ancestors that we all may share. The forces that guide you and me. Praise the measures of truth, satula, and liberation that will set us free. Almighty God bless us. May these go deep within ourselves and motivate ourselves to have love, which means seeking freedom and justice with one another. This we pray, Almighty God. May we all see each other next week. This we pray. Amen. <laughs>